How are we doing today, guys? Hello, hello, hi. Hey, everybody. All right, we're here with the Ungodly Geeks. And I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And today, we're going to be talking about stuff. Um, starting off with our news of the stupid, as we always try to, a Holyoke father arrested after a five-year-old son brings heroin stamped with Spider-Man to school. <laughs> Which is like... Holyoke? Is that the place? That's, I guess so. Holyoke, a city man, was arraigned Friday on <laughs> charges of drug possession and reckless endangerment of a child after his five-year-old son allegedly took a bag of heroin stamped with Spider-Man to kindergarten and put it in his mouth. <laughs> So, yeah. Check out my Spider-Man bag. Uh, start them <laughs> early. Nom, nom, nom. Start them early, guys, I guess. Um, oh I'm not God. exactly sure where Holyoke is. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be in New Hampshire. Let's find out here because I, I got to know. Uh, I, you know. Apparently it's in Massachusetts. Holyoke, Massachusetts. Yeah, I can Okay, see. yeah. Um, all right, whatever. So, that's, that's just... Why? <laughs> <laughs> on so many levels. <clears throat> Benny Garcia, 29, pleaded not guilty in Holyoke District Court on drug possession and distribution <laughs> charges and a charge of reckless endangerment of a child. Garcia was arrested Thursday on a warrant of a 2018 drug possession charge. Judge William Rota ordered Garcia to be held until the dangerousness hearing scheduled for November 20th and revoked his bail on the previous charges. <laughs> <sighs> he took it from me. I didn't give it to the little shit. He sold my heroin. I took it to school. Oh, God, I want that to be his defense. Oh, my goodness. I the little shit stole my goddamn Spider-Man heroin. Oh, wow. It's just... <laughs> Green said the child was taken to Bay State Medical Center. Um, I should probably tell you who that is. Uh... District Attorney Matthew Green. Yeah. Because I'm skipping through some of this because whatever. I some of this. Green said the child was taken to Bay State Medical Center in Springfield and is okay. Please contact the boy's mother, Green said, who gave permission to officers to search her apartment at 145 Essex Street. Why are we putting their fucking like, addresses yeah, out there? What, Jesus. what is wrong with you? During the search, officers located Garcia sleeping on his bed with other bags holding white powder strewn beneath him. <laughs> Albert this said, motherfucker is the Scrooge McDuck of heroin. Adding that as he was handcuffed, other bags fell from his person. <laughs> he is the Scrooge McDuck of bags of heroin. I imagine this dude having like a giant like DuckTales vault where it's just oh full of God. little baggies of heroin that he just jumps that's into his, and that's his, through. That's his fucking fantasy as he opens like a suitcase. Still, a suitcase full of bags of heroin is not nothing to be no, absolutely not what man. i've got okay i want to know the backstory because i feel like this guy isn't a hardened drug dealer i feel like this um. guy got a <laughs> like got a random package in the mail no that wasn't addressed oh okay what's no it say? according to court documents please find 150 package bags of heroin marked with the logo Jesus. power and 20 other back package bags of heroin in the dresser drawer 10 clear ziploc bags of cocaine and two glass line <laughs> bags of heroin on a bed 38 bags of cocaine on Garcia's person. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my God. And two glass line bags of heroin on Garcia. Officers also reportedly found war four walkie-talkies and charges in the home's kitchen pantry. The officers located the same sort of baggie of heroin stamped Spider-Man that the child brought to school in the dresser drawer of the defendant's bedroom, Green said in court. Wait, he only had one more Spider-Man? <clears throat> See, that's the rare shit. My goodness. <laughs> Uh, that may be one of the only cases I can think of where he, they may literally legitimately have been like, we're going to give bags of heroin to children and stamp them with Spider-Man. Oh my goodness. But everyone likes Spider-Man nowadays, so who uh, knows? When officers told Garcia about oh, why they were at his God. home and the situation involving his son, Garcia became very emotional, according to court documents. Albert said the bag was sealed and the police only knew that the boy put the bag in his mouth as he may not have ingested it. According to Albert, the Department of Children and Family Services removed the boy and another infant from the family. He loves Spider-Man, Albert said of the boy. Officers were quite taken by it all. You don't often deal with this. Uh, <laughs> I wish they would have broken into this guy's house and beat the ever-loving shit out of him. Like, seriously, dude. Yeah, oh like, my God, he deserved to be beaten half to death. And then done again. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, no, he was definitely, like... He's swimming in fucking bags of heroin and coke. Yeah, yeah, no, What the, dude... the fuck? He's the worst drug dealer ever. It's got to be. Yes. Definitely, definitely awful. It sounds like a real, like, big drug dealer maybe just gave gives this guy his stuff and is like, you, you hold, you're great, man. You hold on to it. Yeah. You go ahead and send it out for me. And just waiting for, oh, he got, all right, 
<laughs> He's done. Yep. And how stupid, much stupid luck this guy must have had to not have gotten I, caught by it, now. It's amazing, though. That's all I can really say at this point. That's so fucking stupid. Um. All right. So moving on. Kids, goddamn! Look at my Spider-Man baggie. <laughs> look at my Spider-Man hero. Spider-Man pixie dust. Pixie. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah, right? um, I, actually, I have no idea what state heroin is in when it's in a bag. Is it's it just. Uh, it it can be a powder because you because I know you have to put it in a spoon fucking, and heat it up. Yeah, yeah. we're not going to tell you how to do heroin. But, no, uh, I mean we might, but yeah. um, I just know there's there's chlorine. <laughs> um, Florida couple gives birth to boy thanks to win a baby contest. Um, a win a baby contest hosted <laughs> by a Florida radio station helped turn one couple into parents. The contest, which was hosted by Florida's B1039 in November 2017, offered one woman the chance to receive a free round of in vitro fertilization Jesus and all the medication needed. The sweep says called for videos from women explaining why they'd be a great mom, the station said in a blog post Saturday. The winners of the 2017 were Krista and Anthony It Rivera makes me so Kate mad Burrell. that it's wholesome, but at the same time, it's... personally, I like Florida Man Wins Baby in Radio <laughs> Contest as the title. Yes. That's the perfect title for me because it's Florida, so you go, <laughs> oh, God, what did they do? <laughs> you know, I like guess Florida, so you're like, what, why? But then you're like, wait, where did they get the baby from? <laughs> well, it's Florida. It's, oh, my God, they're just handing them out now. Oh, uh, <laughs> The couple welcomed their son, Garrett Campbell Rivera, into the world in August 2019. Well, so that's pretty cool. I right? still like, say that's not a contest I want to win, but absolutely in those situ- in that situation where she won the in vitro fertilization and all that, I, I mean, guess that's expensive. Yeah, it's like $20,000 on average. Jesus fuck. Yeah. Um, it's, that's a cycle, too. And in, in, in most cases, apparently it's not covered by insurance. No, of course. So it's I, like, I'm not why would it be, right? Yeah, Because, yeah, you know. oh, we're going to have a baby, which means you're going to be costing us more for insurance. Right. Yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's a thing. They want a baby. And that's actually kind of yeah. nice. We you know, want like, a baby. But <laughs> the, the headline when I initially looked at that was just like, What? Lord Man wins baby in radio contests. They, are they just... Win a baby radio contest. <laughs> like, like, are they... Did they go to, like... Did they cover adoption fees? Yeah. Did they just say, here's a baby that was abandoned from Hurricane Katrina? That's I was like, <laughs> yeah, I don't get we it. We found it wandering around after the last hurricane. <laughs> Here you go, here's buddy. The winner gets this beautiful baby. It's not a It's not a contest you want to win. No. It's a random draw. I mean... The, like, here, you take care of this kid. I mean, if I... <laughs> here, here, I just love the prospect of here. Here's a random baby. Mm-hmm. Just have fun. Like, what are you gonna do with a random baby this weekend in Bernie's? It's the show. plot of the Mandalorian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely correct. Um, you know, dude's paid to go get a baby. Go get the baby. He doesn't know there's a baby until he gets it, though. Fifty year old baby. What the fuck, man? What is up with Yoda's species? What is he? Where the fuck? Hey, elves in D&D are not considered adults still 100. 50-year-old elf is like a teenager. Yeah, I know, but this is a 50-year-old baby. Yeah, it's a baby baby. <laughs> like, this thing is is, is like He's eight fucking... inches tall, probably weighs 12 pounds at the most. I, d- oh, I don't know, man. That thing's teeny. It's yeah. adorable. This is the fucking most adorable thing in Star Wars ever. Yeah, easily. Okay, so we're not talking about that. And spoilers for Mandalorian if you haven't nah. watched it yet. Um, so last thing I want to talk about before we move on to our main topics tonight, today, this morning, whatever. This afternoon, this evening, and good night. Um, <laughs> good luck and good night. Harriet screenwriter says the studio exec wanted Julia Roberts to play Harriet Tubman. Harriet, Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Just the. It's like. Just how out of touch with reality are you? I want to know if, like, her first, like, slave escapee slash love interest was going to be played by Justin Trudeau. Oh, my God. <laughs> in blackface? Of course. Yeah. Apparently, it's just a thing that he did growing up a lot. A lot. Though. Like, that's the thing that bothers you, you know? Like, I love that. Like, that's... one time, fine. When they it was for a him, costume are party. Are there going to be any more times we might find out you were in blackface? And he's like, I can't answer that. There could be. He's like, what the fuck were you doing, dude? Yeah, like, what were you doing with your life that you thought that was a good idea? I mean, Jesus. Like, like, like I said, I, I think for me it's one thing if you're, like, going to a costume party and you're legitimately playing it up, hamming it up as as a character from history, right? I, I think that's specifically the wrong place to do it. Is if you're just because that is like that that is. I'm not saying playing a caricature. That is right? almost exactly 
the the reason to not Actually, do blackface. Let's just say there is yeah, there is no good reason to really no, do it. No, I think the closest that I can ever come to like um was uh, uh hey, Tropic not, Thunder, only, Robert only, Downey Jr. <laughs> was that yeah, that okay. was the because the whole point of it was this is the extreme. Like it was it was it was taken to that extreme it was, level on purpose. It was taking the piss out of it. Yeah, yeah. Like this is Hollywood at its most extreme. You could see them doing this sort of shit. You can see them doing this really stupid thing. Yeah. I yeah. don't like the only time is acceptable for you as a white person to put black makeup on your face is if you're in the military and you're sneaking through a jungle <laughs> at like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right? Like that that would be the only acceptable time. Because you're see, not <laughs> those fucking soldiers like painting themselves up like, hey, look, blackface. Uh, and then just one black soldier just punches them like, fuck yes. <laughs> don't be stupid, stupid. But I, yeah, no. so I think, yeah, that would be the only truly acceptable instance. That maybe if they were doing a movie about minstrel shows, like that was, you know, showing like, uh, you know, hey, this is actual American history. It's racist as fuck. Something like that. But otherwise, yeah, no, I can't think of why would you ever think Julia Roberts for Harriet Tubman? Let's go ahead. Put well, her in black. Oh, no, 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 just, no, 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 Listen, 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 listen. Just, just cut it off a little bit there. Why would you ever suggest a white person to play Harriet Tubman? No, I get that completely. You know, like, like Julia Roberts, big name. That's probably what he was thinking. He's dumb as shit. Probably high as hell on I had coke. no idea who the fuck Harriet Tubman was. Yeah, that, that's why I'm like, how can you be so out of touch with you know, just reality. He's like, like he's probably, I don't know who the fucker is that the head of the studio. He's probably somebody who's never not been unseemly rich. Unnamed exec. Un, it's, unimaginably it's just, it's rich. It's just an unnamed exec. According to Harry screenwriter and producer, Gregory Allen Howard, Julie Roberts was suggested by the studio executive to play abolitionist Harriet Tubman. The Oscar winning actress who was white looks nothing like Tubman who was black. Still, the unnamed exec thought the casting made sense. Makes sense to me. I don't know why everyone's gonna fucking give me shit about it. <laughs> fucking like, Julia Roberts is amazing. She can play anybody. Pick up a fucking book. Just any book. It's I don't just even like care. everything was in black and white back then. It fucking doesn't matter. <laughs> there was no color before they Ted Turner. And we'll make it. the movie black and white. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> You're still fucking it up. I know. You know, like oh god, because even no grayscale, you can tell the difference between a dark skin tone and a not dark skin tone. It's Who like, did Dave Chappelle does white face amazing? Yeah, no. And I'm he trying done, to think when he did uh, when he does like the news reporter or the yes. golfer. It was like yes, was the perfect. cops and stuff. Oh yeah, the cops. Did, who else? I swear, I was watching clips because I, I was too young to appreciate it back in the day. Yeah. Um, There was a, another variety show long before, like, Chappelle's show. Um, the Homie the Clown was from, oh, uh, and I can't um, think of the name right Living now. Color? Living Color? Living Color, yeah. yeah. And I swear somebody did, uh, like, White Face in that, but I can't remember. I mean, that's something very much in line with that show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could totally be on board with it. I just... It was just to happen to be like I, I think I listened to Rogan and they talked about fucking how funny that show was and started looking up clips and stuff. Holy fuck, homie, the clown really was goddamn funny. Oh my god, <laughs> the dumbest shit in the world. Which is not white face, but it was he was painted white makeup <laughs> because he was fucking being the clown. But God, it was funny. It was no, that show was definitely definitely hilarious. It was and, a, ahead of its time. <laughs> it's I one mean, of those shows that probably couldn't be made now because. Everyone would be like, oh, no, cancer culture would absolutely destroy it. That Chappelle show, any show like that, it's one of those things where, like, I'm I'm surprised South Park's still in the air. I think you could get away with it. They would get away with it only in the idea of we know exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it to be anti-woke or anti-cancel culture. Yeah. Um and, but I mean, at the same time, you still be fair about it where you, you like, you parody Trump a few times and then it's okay. Yeah. Something like that is what they do. I'm sure if they came out with a show, like even Key and Peele had sketches that tech, like cancel culture would have called out as being awful. Howard shared the story in a focus feature Q and a written earlier, written up earlier this month, as well as an essay published Tuesday by the LA times. 
The writer-producer who worked on the script for Harriet for about 25 years said the climate in Hollywood was very different in 1994 when the meeting took place. Well, that changes everything. Oh, my fuck. No, it doesn't change any goddamn thing. It doesn't matter if it was 1994. They were literally thinking Julia Roberts to play Harriet fucking Tubman. I wish it happened. There's a part of me. There's this deep, dark... I wish it had happened. That would be so fucking hilarious to go... Julia Roberts, oh Oscar-winning oh actress, oh blah, blah, blah. And then be like, hey, by the way, remember when you fucking put on blackface to play Harriet Tubman? Yeah. I was told how one studio head said in a meeting, the script is fantastic. Let's get Julia Paul Roberts to play Harriet Tubman, he recalled. When someone pointed out that Julia Roberts couldn't be Harriet, the executive responded, it was so long ago, no one is going to know the difference. <laughs> oh, that hurts my... St- I- See... See, that is when somebody should push a little button on their desk and that person should be escorted out of the building and thrown off the top floor because you've just – it's not even – it's just everything. History, race. Um, it's like – it's like Fucking everything. You do not – you know, no, no, you violated it, stupidity laws. I agree with you. Like you know how in, in – Awesome powers when someone says something stupid, Dr. Evil would push a button, they get dumped, <laughs> in, they get yes. dumped into the volcano below. That's exactly what needs to happen. Just, just beep. it, <clears throat> or, um, you know, you push a button and a midget comes out of the desk, comes over and just slaps the shit yes. out of you, just you starts know. like beating them with a cudgel about the head and chest. <laughs> Like in this Game of Thrones, and they had the big dumb guy beating Tyrion with that thing. That that's the cudgel. That that's exactly what it needs to be. Just some Something dude comes, and starts beating, just him starts like, slapping the shit out. It of It was you. so long ago. Who's going to know the difference? Who's gonna know the anyone who's difference? had a basic fucking history I went class? To, I went to, and I've said before, a very right, like Christian conservative school. Growing up, we learned about Harriet Tubman. And yes. about the Underground Railroad and all that. Like, that is quintessential American history. Quintessential black American history. I, 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 Just, that is somebody, like I said, and even in 1994, who had never in his life not been the absolute ungodly amount of, uh, <clears throat> like, top. Just never, never thought of money as anything but, well, I just have all of it. Yeah. I, just, I just, geez. this is so stupid. Um, Howard said the person who pointed out the casting might not work was a single black person in the room. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Nobody else. No fucking other motherfuckers. Went, I don't know about that, sir. No, the one. Black That's person. stupid. That's just what I'm going to tell you right now. That, that would be my this reaction. Is Holly, this is Hollywood executives, too. This is why they don't need to fucking touch so it, anything. It was 1994, meaning cocaine was even more prevalent. Oh my god, he yeah. fucking pulled his head out of the mountain of cocaine and went, Julia Roberts can play Harriet Tubman. <laughs> and everyone just went, yes sir. And then that one person was like, that's not gonna work, because she's not black. Yeah, probably no. not even that. Probably like, um, excuse me, like I don't want to butt in or anything, because they'd probably be fucking terrified for their job. Probably, Maybe yes. not. Maybe they, they were somebody uh, high enough up, but Good fucking God. Um, when 12 Years a Slave became a hit. Oh, sorry. Doesn't matter. Nobody's going to know. In the Q&A article, he credited two groundbreaking films helping change minds since then about the importance of realistic casting. Oh, my God. When 12 Years a Slave became a hit and did a couple hundred million dollars worldwide, I told my agent, you can't say this kind of story won't make money now. Oh, my fucking God. Then Black Panther really blew oh. the doors open, Howard said. <laughs> Can you fucking imagine that executive sitting down at his screening of 12 Years a Slave, watching that movie, and after the movie's over, looking at someone going, they were all black? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes, sir. And then he watched fucking, uh, can we go to Wakanda? That's amazing. I didn't know those people were capable of it. Oh, my God. You fuck. No, to the sun. Shoot him into the fucking sun. We God. do not need people like him making that decisions of any kind. Hilarious. I can just imagine the motherfucker watching 12 Years a Slave and being like, wait, this happened? Well, people this... remember this? Yes, people remember this. Oh, you fucking... There are people who are alive today who would remember having to use a different water fountain. Yes. There are people alive today... It's not that long ago. It who... is three people ago. 
<laughs> there are people Fuck, alive today who sense. would know that they had to go to a different school, yeah. that they had to use a different restroom, that they had to sit in the back of the bus. They couldn't sit anywhere they wanted. Like, come on, man. Uh, we, we were to... kind of we were kind of almost blessed growing up when we at least I, I kind of feel that way for myself. Yeah. 90s, 2000s, where now everything's kind of come to a head and is a goddamn mess. But during that time, like I was one of those people that was convinced like Martin Luther King, the the, the whole of that battle for equal rights and everything. I was when I was a kid, I was like, oh, yeah, that was like 100 years ago. Yeah. We've had equality since then and everything's better now. And, uh, you know, it, it's all better. And then it's like, no, that was like your grandparents were around and they were shitty about it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, my grandparents were some of the people talking about Martin Luther King as being like this rabble rouser and this upstart. Rabble and it's rouser. like, holy fuck. <laughs> Thanks, and this Grandpa. asshole, this executive asshole. Oh, that was so long ago. No one's going to remember that. No one remembers what the Civil War was fought over. No one remember. No, no, no. Nobody knows what uh, the what what the fuck is that? The uh, Confederate flags over. Like no one knows yeah. what that represents, which is apparently true. Tennessee flag. You know, because apparently nobody knows what the fuck it represents. Ah, it's like, a Tennessee. I think it was a Tennessee battle flag for uh, Tennessee regiment or some shit like that. At any rate, we Either all way. know it stands for assholes who want to own slaves. Exactly. <laughs> Literally, people who fought against the United States don't call yourself a true American if you fly the yeah, rebel you, flag. You cannot, you cannot sit there and call yourself a patriot. Yeah. if you fly the rebel flag, because you are the exact opposite of that. No, That's why it's called the fought, rebel flag. They murdered Union soldiers. They killed they, Union they soldiers. Ki- they killed fellow Americans over their right to own people. Yeah, as property. You just it, there's it, no it, argument to be made otherwise. Yeah, like that's literally you what can the historical value context is. A rebellious spirit without going, yeah, they knew how to do rebellion. Like, no, no, you're not, you're not helping your fucking cause here, Jebediah. God damn it, Cletus! Shit, <laughs> to the moon, <laughs> to the sun. Fuck it, Cletus and Velveeta. <laughs> hey, fuck you! I had some Velveeta mac and cheese the other night. That shit's still good. <laughs> I know, but it's the uh, it's just the joke oh, because man. it totally sounds like a redneck female name. <laughs> I mean, I about that, but yeah, no, you're not fucking wrong there. <laughs> um, but yeah, Did, okay. So let's let's recap. Uh, <laughs> let's re. I don't want to recap. Owning people is wrong. White people should not be wearing blackface. No, white people should not play black people in the movies. Hey. White people shouldn't play Asian historical uh, people. White people shouldn't play Mexican historical people. Mexicans shouldn't play white historical people. Like, let's you know, just though, be... that one I'll least forgive, um, just because I would forgive a mixed a- I actor forgive, actress I, I in I just forgive, about like, any of those cases. But too. I would forgive a Mexican character, like a Mexican individual playing a white character, just because they at least have European roots. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you know, like. Like, I don't care Spanish and, perfectly. Oh my god, I would love admittedly more ad- movies. Admittedly, to, like, when it comes to that kind of thing, I seriously do not give a shit. Yeah. You can't make me give a shit I because I don't fucking care. White people have had it so good for so long that we deserve to get fucked a little <laughs> bit, right? So it's like whatever. I know it's coming. So that's what you're gonna do. That's how it starts. Whatever. I mean, I. But, um. We shouldn't. I definitely agree. Let's not have any white people playing POC roles. Yeah, you know, like like it's it's dumb. Oh my god! What like go back and watch some of the like trailers and look at clips of things from movies in like the sixties and fifties uh, and, and stuff. Yeah. John Wayne play. The, the, one of my favorite images is John Wayne when he played uh, Attila the Hunt. Yeah, it is so fucking awful looking. It is a goddamn joke. It is a train wreck. All right. So let's hilarious. move on to our main topic today, yeah. which we're going to talk about video games. Yeah. Which is kind of our bread and butter. Yeah. What we started off talking about, that in movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but we decided this this week, you know, maybe we should get a little more topical, especially since next week we won't be doing an episode because yeah. of Thanksgiving. Um, uh, so Pokemon Sword and Shoot. Yeah, it came out to... I mean, okay, I, I will give it credit. In its first three days, it sold like six million copies. It is the fastest selling Nintendo Switch game. 
even though everyone hates it. But again, boycotts in the video game world do not exist. Yeah. Everyone will hate on something and then go out and buy it. I mean, yeah, I stick to my guns. I haven't bought a single EA game since I pledged I wasn't going to buy any EA games anymore. Yeah. So, hey, I, I've done that. That's my boycott. I don't ultimately matter. I am like a drop of a fucking single grain of sand in the Sahara Desert for them, but still, that's mm-hmm. a grain of sand they don't get, so fuck you. <laughs> um, but, yeah. But, yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, for and the it, most part, it nobody... Does not, it does not look good. It's not look good at all. It's just, we talked about way, way back when, how bad the backgrounds looked and some of those textures just non-existent. And they're legitimately compared to N64 textures. It looks like this game was shelved fucking 25 years ago you know you know what it looks like um it looks like the game was made for the nintendo 64 yeah and then they they decided you know what let's not do that anymore so they put it away like you said they shelved it and then they pulled it out and just updated the models yeah, they just they, dropped updated models i in think there. they updated it and then they were like hey maybe we'll get it on the gamecube nope we're putting it away Maybe we'll put it out on no, uh, no. I mean, maybe, maybe. I, I could have seen this almost having like a do or a um, a uh, a Duke Nukem Forever development cycle. Of oh my god, the, the, the ultimate never paperware. Yeah, but nobody knew about it other than like everyone wanted the three D Pokemon <clears throat> open world adventure. Yeah, no, Just, we mean, never got it, and then this that's because it was behind closed doors. Who knows? Either way, I, I mean, to be fair, at the same time though, like even the best kept secrets have leaks exactly so yeah. like I, I feel like if, if this were even a thing we people would have known about we would have known sure. about it yeah um i just like that as a joke the <clears throat> the thing that bugs me a, a whole hell of a lot because i was kind of on i i didn't hate on the character models early on because i heard they were taking them straight out of um let's go eevee and i thought those character models look fine yeah so the pokemon themselves don't look terrible they look good. However, watching battle animations, it's and they've compared the the animations are straight out of the 3DS games. Yeah, are straight out of uh, Sun and Moon, and in some cases even uh, fucking Emerald, I think, or whatever came before Sun and Moon. Um, definitely not Emerald. I mean, not Emerald. I Emerald did before. come before Sun and Moon. Well, right before, yeah. But you're talking, you're thinking like X Y, yeah, uh, Omega XY, Ruby, yeah. Alpha Sapphire, stuff like Ruby's, that. Yeah, yada yada. Yeah, yeah. The that like I watched of like a whole battles and was like holy fuck that's not at all what i want i mean trash like all right so when i first played x and y back in 2013 i'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure um i kind of forgave the janky animations Mm -hmm. that they had in in a as a sort of it's still on a plat- mobile platform. It's right, yes. Yeah, so game, game, not a Game Boy, but it's still a fucking I mean, Game Boy. It's on the 3DS. It's their first real, like, foray into this 3D-like environment. Not yeah. discounting something like Pokemon Stadium, right? Yes. Because you're going from, there were like, what, 251 Pokemon then. Well, actually, the original Stadium only had the first 151. Mm-hmm. So now you got 800 fucking Mons that you have to do things for. Yeah, 700 it's insane. So, like, all right, I'll forgive them. Like, like, if I get a tail whip, I expect my Pokemon to turn around and, like, wag its tail or whatever, not sit there and go, you know, where it's just jumping in place and, like, yeah. back side to side or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> but it's like, I, I, I'll forgive it then, because it was 2013, it was 3DS, yeah. I think it was a piece of shit, comparatively speaking, to anything we have today. And, like I said, it was our first foray. And it was full 3D. It the was, game yeah, looked no, good. 100% the 3D. The towns was, looked good. Like, everything I, looked it legitimately looked impressive. Yeah. Uh, I skipped um, Sun and... I, well, I didn't skip Sun and Moon. I, I went to uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Mm-hmm. And I thought those games were brilliant. Yeah. But they suffered from that same thing where... And animations just weren't there. So yeah. I'm like, huh. Okay. And so I skipped Sun and Moon. I skipped Ultra Sun and Moon. I was like, I don't fucking care about these games, given the quality of game I got from Alpha, Ru- Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I doubt these improve on it. It's just they, the only thing they're really advertising are gimmicks. I don't care. Mm-hmm. So I never bought those games. never got into them. <clears throat> then, um, pardon me, Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu came out. I'm like, that looks really cool. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a different take on the Pokemon formula. I think I will buy one of those. And I did. I bought Eevee and I enjoy it. I don't mm-hmm. regret buying it. 
Um, it's stupid easy. Yeah. Very quick to get through. Not much gameplay there. Um, but the it was still The focus isn't on the battles. It, it does, it, like we said, it changes up <coughs> quite a bit of what right, is yeah. Pokemon. It's not the same game released every year. Yeah. And then again released because they can fucking somehow make two of the same game and then update it a slight amount and make two more of the same game. Yeah. And then yeah. next year do it again with a different name and people still buy them. Yep. Yeah, I, I think for me, the Pokemon, Ingenious. that 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 entire hype mm-hmm. around Pokemon series died out with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Because, like, like, I still have the games, I still have my 3DS, yeah. it's still functional somehow, I don't know, I've had the same 3DS for six years now, I don't know how I haven't broken it, or the battery has... You even let Jake borrow it for a while, I even let Jake borrow works. it for a while, and it still works, <laughs> so it's like... The battery is shot to hell, yeah. because it's six years old at this point, and for the last... However many months it's been since I got it back from them, it's just been sitting there on his charger because mm-hmm. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just like I don't care anymore. And so, I, and, and before we started this um, off air, um, I, I was sitting there talking about how I almost wanted to buy one of the games. Oh, I did. Yeah, like, like, I was like, going to say. Well, I was I'm talking like I'm talking like yesterday type oh, shit. Yeah, like yeah. <clears throat> like yesterday, I'm sitting there like I was looking at like. Everything I've got, all of the credit and everything available to me, I thought, you know, I could probably buy one of those and play it. And um, I thought about it for a bit, and then I fired up Let's Go Eevee. And uh, and Let's Go Eevee, I'm at the end game. I have all 151 Pokemon. You've beaten it, basically. I've completely it. beaten it. Completely it. Yeah, like, I've got Mewtwo. The so most you can He's do now is go get all the shinies, which is... No. Um, <laughs> exactly. I've got Mewtwo, though. He's level 98. I've got a Mew at level 96, 97 now. Like, the only thing I can do at this point is, like you said, go grab the Shinies or, uh, you know, go say fuck it and level up all of my Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I was sitting there like, huh. So I fired that game up. Um, I put my Mew in my first slot and just proceeded to go through and thrash the Elite Four. Like, fuck you, Elite Four. And after I got to the end of that, I'm like, okay, I don't want to buy a sword anymore. I don't want to buy either of these games anymore. I've yeah. got my Pokemon fixed And you now. even did most of the uh, advanced trainers or whatever they were called, right? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've yeah. gone through and, and defeated a lot of the – not all of the Masters. I defeated like maybe five or six of them. Yeah. Uh, the ones that mattered to me were Mewtwo Master, Mew Master, and a few of the other high-level Pokemon like that. Mm-hmm. Articuno, Vol- Moltres, and Zapdos. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I don't yeah. care. I don't, don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah um, – <clears throat> I've got my fix. Yeah. Because Pokemon just isn't that special anymore. Because they haven't done anything in this 20 years haven't to, to really change the formula around. The biggest change for this game is apparently the, the more quote-unquote open world part of it. Right. But the game doesn't want you to do that early on. Yeah. You have to level up and until you get to a certain level, you can't even catch some of the more powerful Pokemon. Yeah, I was which there reading is that. one of the more interesting things like, to me. Like, why not? Right? Yeah. Like, 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 like if I original... get lucky, yeah. let me catch the fucking Gyarados. Right. You know, like, like in red and blue, you know, you didn't need a specific badge to catch the Articuno in Seafoam Islands. Right? No. Yeah. You didn't need a special badge to catch Zapdos in the elect the Power Company. If their level was too high, you just had to go and beat the next gym. You just had to go and like, yeah, you had to go beat the next gym if you wanted them to listen to you. Or you just had to grind it out a little bit, get a little bit more powerful, and, and capture them. Like you yeah. didn't need anything special to catch any mon, really. You could catch you could go to the fucking Cerulean Cave and catch Mew with a Mewtwo rather with a goddamn Pokeball if you really wanted to. Yeah. Might take, take you a forever. while. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take forever, but you ninety nine thousand Pokeballs, but hey. You know though, I made an actual point in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire mm-hmm. to catch as many Pokemon, like high level Pokemon, yeah. like legendaries and stuff, in regular Pokeballs. Yeah. Like I made it a point. So I would sit there, I'd buy like five or six hundred Pokeballs. I'd go into battle just with these. Bam that just fucking Pokeball. Bam that motherfucker <laughs> until I caught it. Yeah. And so, like, if you look in my uh, my Pokemon box or whatever, home, whatever it is on the 3DS where you can store your Pokemon on Nintendo servers for five bucks a year, you'll see that aside from the event Pokemon, mm-hmm. every single one of my legendary Pokemon are caught in regular Pokeballs. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Because fuck you. Yeah. Like, in the show, you don't see them using Master Balls or Great Balls or Ultra Balls. You see them using regular Pokeballs. Pokeballs. Just one. So, for me, it's like, you know what? 
I think it. they maybe mention other Pokeballs once or twice. I mean, other Pokeballs are definitely mentioned, right? Like, the GS yeah. Ball is mentioned. It's even featured in the show a little yeah. bit. The yeah. Master Ball is definitely mentioned. I think you mm-hmm. even see it once or twice. Um, and, but and, Ash isn't, like, <laughs> stocking up on Ultra Balls. Or yeah, yeah, like you don't that. see him, like, you don't see him. Not more. that they go out and actually catch Pokemon in the goddamn show anyway. I think you, uh, Lore Balls do pop up. I remember seeing a Lore Ball. Oh, oh okay. Um, which is, like, the ball that... Uh, you get made out of acorns for catching, um, is it acorns? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Catching, uh, um, fucking water type Pokemon. Mm. Yeah. So whatever. I, I do know those pop up though. I just, the, the, I, I kind of. <coughs> apricorns. That's not acorns, apricorns. When we, and I know we talked about on here, this is like for what I've wanted since fucking red and blue, um, I wanted and open a big Pokemon game. I want to see my Pokemon in 3D battling. I want it to look cool. It doesn't have to look like the Pokemon, um, the fighting game. Right. It doesn't right. Have, I understand. It's still a turn based yeah. game. But even turn based games can look really fucking awesome. Their yeah. attacks can I be mean, varied. Dude, when, um... Pokemon you know, it, it, characters have different m- models, moves, and stuff. And when you tell me you're taking out the vast majority of the 800 or so Pokemon, to do better and do more with the models and with the animations, then you better fucking do more with the do models what and you animations. Said. And they did nothing. Yeah, and th- there's nothing really different. They said the same exact animations we've seen for years. Some of them look like they could have fucking come right out of red and blue. The like you said, fucking tail whip. The Pokemon turns around and fucking sh- bobs back and forth. Doesn't bend or twist or move its ass. Its tail doesn't even fucking no, move. Whole body it moves. just whole body moves left and right like no, like a fucking sausage on a stick. Speaking of that little wiener dog, yes. the new Pokemon. The some of the new Pokemon look awesome and adorable. I really wanted that fucking like kiss inspired weasel looking fuck. <laughs> that looked awesome. I want a metal Pokemon. I want I want the Yamper, which is the electric uh Corgi. Yes, that's yes. what I was talking about. Yeah, the little corgi. This is fucking adorable. But then all of that stuff I see, and I'm like, I don't. Why? What the fuck? I mean, yeah. And yeah. then it's the same exact game, just kind of puts that hamper. And I'm like, um, I could do that, or I'm not, like, I, I could go play a Star Wars game that's actually good, which came out of that. that like, oh my god, we finally have a good Star Wars game. I'll talk about that in a few fucking minutes. You know, but. Like, like, for me, I'm not ordinarily the kind of person who will let graphics decide for me whether or not yeah. a game is going to be good. But when you look at this in the grand scheme of things, it's the same fucking game repackaged again. Yes. So um, if we're going to repackage new, the same game, yeah, at least a, do some other things around it. it it's a brand. It, it's on a brand new system, mm-hmm. right? I'm not going to say the Switch is a powerhouse because it's mm-hmm. not. But there's no reason it should look like, you know, Nintendo 64 The textures graphics. look like they're, just, they're trash. It looks like they picked them out of the you know what fucking it looks like? bin. It looks like somebody took Morrowind, just Morrowind. Oh, God. And, and, and Turned then, the brightness all the way up? And then gave it Skyrim color? models. <laughs> they gave it color? <laughs> they gave it, like, high-grade The Witcher 3 type models it's like, with, like, those muddy-ass 640 by yeah. 640 textures that, like, my... my fucking watch could render no problem it's like i don't get it and man. there's no excuse for this when you look at a game like mario uh odyssey. yeah you look at odyssey you look at breath of the wild you look just, at literally any i don't other... need the grass from breath of the wild i don't need no, the grass not. i don't need you you've got grass in pokemon and it could be really static or maybe just a little the same move whatever you want to do skyrim bushes in there and i'd but, be happier but Oh my god, it needs to look better than what it fucking does. It's awful. Plus, uh, like from clips I've seen, the pop in of textures yeah, is it's just really, atrocious. It's really awful. Yeah, like they need more fog of war. Like they really fucking Something. do need more fog of war. So, like it, it's so. But terrible. it's empty, so there's no excuse for that either. There's like like one. They're wandering around the open area, and you see like one or two trees and like a bridge in the distance, and then the fucking Pokemon like pop up out of nowhere. Yeah. Or you see one of the trees pop in and like yeah. kind of vi- like you know how they visually in and out for a second. It's like. Yeah. There's no fucking excuse. Did you for have that. that Z mapping issue where the textures flicker a little bit? Yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, come on, dude. Uh, so yeah. it's no wonder people are so fucking pissed. Like you on said, top um, of not having the full Pokedex. Yeah. Like you know what? I'll for- I, I I don't even care about the full Pokedex part. Um, I I don't I don't it should if they it should bother it. me with some justification I wouldn't care, but they like if you're gonna cut out all the starters except for fucking Charizard. Fuck you. 
Give me at least Squirtle. If you're not going to give me Squirtle, give me the retarded alligator from second gen. You know, um, I fucking love Fratligator. That's, and that actually reminds me, um, in this, in the game, one of the new Pokemon they add is an apple that is both a dragon it's, and a grass type. But it's literally a fucking apple. It's a fucking apple. Go fuck yourself. But like that's a dragon, but fucking company. Charizard's not a goddamn dragon. Charizard is literally Little. physically a dragon, but the fucking apple. It's literally an apple with eyes on the I want to go back to 1994 or whenever when they were designing Pokemon and they came up with the types and they came up with dragon type and, and all of that and they went, okay, this is our this is our dragon type. His name is Dragonair. Yeah. And he is our dragon. Yeah. And it is traditional Chinese sort right, of which dragon. Is fine. And right? then this is uh, our other dragon type, Gyarados. And he's yep, that's that's great. That's that's fucking pretty much looks like a dragon. Yeah. And this is Charizard. He's only flat fire. Well, no, in the original one fifty one, there were only three dragon Pokemon: Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. Oh yeah, no, Gyarados, Gyarados didn't even have dragon type back Gyarados then. Gyarados is a dragon, but it is water and flying. Yes, Charizard is well, a Gyarados dragon. Gyarados isn't flying. Yeah, it is. it's water and flying type. Gyarados is oh my yep. god I fucking hate Pokemon um, this is why I stopped fucking playing Pokemon after the second gen this is why I stopped playing Pokemon Go like four or five months ago but yeah well, Gyarados is a water and, and, and water and flying type and um, Charizard is a fire and flying type yeah it's stupid as fuck it just doesn't make any guy wait can Gyarados learn fly no but Pidgey can why is Gyarados Car- I, they don't make any goddamn sense. Yep. I hate Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I. but I really wanted Gyarados. this game. Gyarados, yep, is a water and flying type. I wanted this fucking game, hardcore. Um, And then all this, the like, like I, the anime, like, the, 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 the just the, the graphics, normally not a big deal, but okay, that's kind of worrisome. And then, oh, they're going to cut a bunch of Pokemon? Well, that kind of sucks. Okay, well, oh, they want to make, they want to do better in other ways. Okay, well, we'll see what's going on. Oh, oh, that's what they're giving us. So here's, here's a, here's a, here's a, um, fuck. Here's, here's a question I have. How big is, so Pokemon Sword and Shield, um, is, is, how big is the download? 9.5 gigabytes, apparently. Well, The Witcher 3 is 32. Yeah. It's like 29.9. So we've got a game like The Witcher 3, 29 gigabytes, and all of its content. And you mean to tell me you couldn't include all the Pokemon? No, they just, it, they wanted to do as little as possible. And I'm convinced that that's their motive. Pokemon, the Pokemon releases are Nintendo's Madden. Oh my God. They're Nintendo's, and um, it's something that's when it was on the Game Boy, they could get away with it. Right. And not on the anymore. 3DS, it's yeah. not okay anymore. This is a not fucking okay console anymore. release. God. I just don't get it, dude. Pokemon, okay, here's something that's moderately related, but uh-huh. not really. Um, this happened at the end of last month. A Pokemon streamer spent 101 hours soft resetting for a shiny Mewtwo, and then it ran away. <laughs> oh. That's horrid. Oh. My heart that is fucking horrid. My heart goes out to you, S. Monroe Show. Um, you I, know I'm the so uh, sorry. Uh, the the lady that's on um, Jim Sterling's podcast, uh, Laura Dale. Whatever. I don't yeah. know. I don't pay attention. But uh, yes. I listen to that podcast. I, I, like I am it. familiar with Laura. She went and played uh, Let's Go Eevee until capturing all 151 <laughs> shiny Pokemon and actually completed it. And then found out nothing could be transferred over to, uh, at least right now. Maybe eventually it'll be. But that the Pokedex was cut for (laughs) Sword and Shield. And they cut the shit out of um, first gen. Mm -hmm. Like, way more than one would think. Right. So now that's just, it's pretty much useless. Yeah. That sucks so fucking much. I I feel for her, too. Yeah. Like, that's real. They've released like new shinies. Like instead of it being nobody sparkles, they have squares, and I, it's yeah, ultra I, rare. I don't care. It's just so just fucking no. Fuck you guys, and that's All how right. they distract. That's how All they right. make that fucking game. You guys have phones. All right, so let's move on. Do you guys? God damn you, Google Stadia. Just as Google bad. Stadia. 
Um, Actually, arguably, a lot worse. Arguably worse. A lot yeah. worse. At least with Pokemon Sword and Shield, you're still getting a game. You still get a Pokemon game. At at core, it's Pokemon. That's not that's that's not a that's a plus or a minus to me. But f- there's a lot of people out there who are going, yeah, but Pokemon. All right, so uh, which I don't fault them. If you love, end up loving that game. Yeah, fine, you, whatever. It's just I I wanted something to get me back into it, and this is not going to be it. Maybe they'll start uh, they uh, updates later on. Right, something right. that'll bring me. Maybe, maybe they'll fix it in a, in a future patch or something, right? Because it's a possibility. Or do something that makes up for these shortcomings. They don't have to release new animations. No, if no, they come but, up with uh, some other cool thing, I would argue they need to fix it, no matter what they do. They need to do something. All right, so anyway, yeah. um, we're going to move on and talk about Google Stadia for a minute. Yeah, um, that came out to... Because that's, that's a video game thing, and... <laughs> to it, crickets it, it, and tumbleweeds. It launched 9 a.m. <laughs> Pacific Standard Time, which for us uh, would be 12 p.m. Mm-hmm. on November 19th, which was... Uh, that was Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, this past Tuesday. I it come out on fucking um, Tuesday. Last week, weird. basically, because, you know, our, yeah. our podcast releases on Tuesday, so last Tuesday. Um... And it, it, it's missing, like, all the features they said it would have. <laughs> yeah. Um, on day one, PC Chrome gameplay won't support 4K HDR or 5.1 surround sound. That's inexcusable that, that you don't would have be, 5.1 surround sound. That would be the only reason I would subscribe to Stadia it's right now. It's for the 4K. Because... I can already do 1080p 5.1 surround sound HDR with my mm-hmm. current setup. So the only reason why I would personally want to pay Google for the privilege of playing Stadia, no, Google, we're not talking to you, <laughs> um, would be the 4K resolution, which yeah. I can do in some games, but not all. So, okay, you're yeah. missing a key feature that you said you have. You you hyped it up. You'll be able to play in 4K, 144 frames a second, blah, blah, blah. Can't do it on PC. Um Stream Connect, which allows one player Stadia viewpoint to be integrated in with another player stream, will not be available in any of the launch games. Mm-mm. The first game to use it is expected to launch by the end of the year, so we don't even know what game it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably one of the only exclusives they have. I think there's a it's going to be Orcs an indie game. Three. <laughs> there's something like that. Yeah. Um, State Share, which lets users share save files via links, and Crowd Play, which allows for a quick jump in multiplayer through a YouTube stream, won't be integrated into games until next year. Of course. Which was a those I don't know about State Share, but I know Crowd Play was a really big thing that they That's were advertising. That's pretty fucking cool, to be honest. I'm completely down with that. Like yeah. if I'm sitting there watching a streamer on YouTube, which I don't do because YouTube sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm sitting there watching it like it's a streamer, I don't I, put I, too many emojis. <laughs> <laughs> lose your goddamn Google account. Yeah, not just your YouTube account. You use <laughs> your, your whole fucking, fucking Google, Google account, account. <laughs> for s- f- f- emoji use, really. Oh, my God. Um, at launch, the Google Assistant integration will be limited to the ability to turn on the TV and start a game. Yeah, nothing else. Nothing else. It doesn't do anything else. Uh, soon after launch, the Assistant button on Stadia Control will work on Chromecast Stadia home screen. Assistant support on PCs and phones during gameplay will come sometime after that. Yeah. So another feature they said was going to be available and that they hyped up isn't going to be available. Um, family sharing, which lets you buy a game once and share it with accounts held by family members, is not supported on day one, so you'll have to buy games for your child's account. Yeah. And if you want that game too, you're going to have to play on your kid's account. So you're going to sit there and shell out 120 bucks mm-hmm. on Stadia. For the, you to have a game as well as your child. The game. Xbox 360 had the ability yes. to download a game on one account and anyone playing on that console with yep. a different account could play that game. In fact, it also had the ability where you could be signed in on two two uh, systems at the same time yeah. and share it that way. Yeah. So um, here's one that's whatever. There is no Stadia UI for achievements or achievement notifications on day one. Nope. But if you happen to perform an in-game feat that would earn a specific it's, achievement, it will show up when the feature is rolled out it's gonna shortly it. after launch. This is the fucking um, gearbox of, uh, or um, Epic, Game, Epic Store? Game Store of yeah. consoles. Yeah. Chromecast Ultra units, including in the Founder slash Premiere bundles, are the only ones that will work with Sadio on day one. 
Yeah, normal Chrome Grass Ultra won't work. Other Chrome Grass Ultra units will be able to play Stadia on games after an over-there update soon after launch. Meaning, if you wanted to do the Stadia, you have to buy the Stadia. You have to buy the controller. You have to buy all that You, you have to buy the Founders Premier Edition models. Yeah, which completely goes against a big part of their sell, sales pitch of you could subscribe, you could download Stadia games, and not have to buy... Uh, any hardware. So, um, another thing that they were pushing was the Buddy Pass, mm -hmm. which was a code that you would get uh, if you bought Founders or Premier Editions that would let you uh, share three months free with a friend. Yeah. Um, about, you will, you will get that code about two weeks after you receive your bundle, barring some unknown unknowns. <laughs> Barring some unknown unknowns. Because there are no knowns and there are known unknowns. <laughs> there are also unknown unknowns. Shit, we don't know. We don't know yet. Currently, the phone is needed for initial setup and buying games. Buying games through the Chromecast Ultra or the web has not supported, and the AMA gave no indication if or when it Fucking would be added. how? Um, uh, as previously discussed... Mobile support will be limited to Google Pixel phones and Chrome OS tablets at launch. A timeline for general iOS and Android support is still to be determined, but Pixel will likely be the only mobile support this year. Yeah. According to the AMA, Google says it wants to Stadia to run on every screen eventually. So, once <laughs> I again... Mi I think Microsoft is on more screens right now with their share play than... than I mean, the fucking Google Stadia. I can definitely tell you... It's literally that a fucking mobile company! I can definitely tell you that the Steam uh, share play thing is definitely on more screens than yeah. Stadia. Because I can play it on my Chromecast. I can play it on my Shield TV. I can play it on my Steam Link, which I already have. I can play it yeah. on other computers connected to my network and connected to my Steam Chromecast account. Chromecast Ultra would be faster than And Steam Link. I can play it on my OnePlus 7 Pro. Yeah. So. It's just so, it's so sad. Um, as previously discussed, the Stadia's controller's wireless functions will only work with a Chromecast Ultra at launch. Mm -hmm. To use that controller with a phone and tablet, you'll need to plug it in via a USB-C cable. Generic USB ugh. generic USB controllers will also work with Stadia on PC or phones, but not Chromecast. <laughs> and as previously discussed, only 12 titles will be available for purchase on Stadia at launch, with 14 more promised by the end of the year. Which I do believe that number was increased to 22 before they released it, but I could be wrong. I saw something that said 10 more games. Yeah. But I don't know. That must have been released like the day before. Mm -hmm. Either way, the games that have been announced are legitimately yeah, underwhelming. We're I mean, talking old games. The only game that I think they're launching with that I probably would play would be Destiny 2, but I'm already playing that for free. Yeah. So. Oh, and by the and this is all this is the list of shit that it didn't have when it launched. This isn't even the yeah, no, these continuation. Are the features, these are the features that Google claimed it would have that it doesn't have. This isn't even the update of hey, it came out, and guess what? People already are having issues with it. Yeah, the streaming sucks. Uh, if, the visual quality is just okay. Uh, digital yeah, Foundry, at best. yeah, Digital Foundry found that. Uh, most games can't maintain a consistent 60 frames a second and of course not. aren't even playing at 4K and are at best playing at 1440p. Yeah. Like Red Dead Redemption 2 isn't playing at 4K. And I bet that is with a fucking expensive internet connection. Oh, they probably have like a high-grade fiber yeah. connection. Yeah. Yeah. For the average user, for the average internet user, it's, yeah. I, I guarantee it's not. And people are, are saying it's not holding frames. Yeah. It's getting disconnected. It's having serious connection issues. Uh and not not to mention that the infrastructure is um, not there for it. If you are um, using like the maximum quality, um, you might reach twenty gigabytes an hour of data usage. Which, if you have a data cap, yeah, ten hour gameplay could kill your data cap. Not only that, some companies don't even tell you they have a data cap. Yep, they just cut you off. They'll at some just point. cut you the fuck off yeah. or hemorrhage your. But twenty connection. gigabytes an hour is rough. Um, Considering the previous estimate was 15.75 gigabytes an hour for a 4K HDR signal with 5.1 surround sound. Yeah. Uh, if you limit the stream to 720p stereo, you're still you still might get 4.5 gigabytes an hour, which is a huge amount of data. Yeah. You know, like, eh. um, I just don't think that this was uh, ready. 
No, not at all. I think they're trying. I think they're jumping the gun. But this seems to be kind of Google's MO when they come up with an idea. Google likes to just fucking go, nope, nope, just go launch it. And then they'll go up. Oh, well, that was a great experiment. And they'll pretend that it wasn't a serious thing. They'll call it, you know, a trial, blah, blah, blah. We're working for the future. Yeah. We'll figure something out. And then it ends up dead. Yeah. And this is something where if you are one of these people that bought it, if Google decides that, then you're oh, yeah, shit see, out of luck. That was my big thing with Stadia being a thing. Like Project Stream, when it was early release, seemed really cool. It seemed like, oh, that's a really cool idea. Maybe it'll be something I'll check out. Um. Stadia, like you said, our infrastructure just isn't ready for it right now. No, and, and with Google's penchant to just shut down projects or shut down things that they're doing, Google Wave, Google Plus, uh, Google Reader, okay. all of these things that had wide user bases, maybe not Google Plus, but things that had, had big user base. Like Google Wave was really fucking cool back when it was a thing. Um, I'm like a, a Google Reader so many people use that. Do you have any idea? They shut it down. Yeah. It's like Google has this history and there's websites dedicated to all uh, the products. Google Graveyard or whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah, all the yeah. products that Google has started and then abandoned. Yeah. Or just shut down. You know, like like Google Voice is one of those things. It's still going. It's still a thing. But it took them five years to update the service. Mm -hmm. You know, it took them five years to update the app from whatever the fuck design philosophies we had on Android 2. Point fuck whatever to what we have now. It's like five years, guys. Come on. Yeah. So it's like I, it's one of those things where it's like I'm really surprised that I'll be surprised if Stadia lasts more than a year, maybe two. Yeah. You know, and if it even gets subscribers at this point, 10 bucks a month is not a bad price, but – for what you're getting, it's awful. Like mm -hmm. I think the Nintendo online service is is more is worth more than this. Yeah, and in, in this uh, you get more games with it. <laughs> so yeah, you get the, I mean, I still say the golden uh, the golden child of that, like the golden standard, is um, Microsoft is A uh, Xbox Game Xbox Pass. Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. Like they're like, hey, get this, and we'll put our new games on it too. Yeah. I you know our Discord first party games though, immediately will release. Discord right now is offering three months of that free if you're a Discord Nitro subscriber, and I'm thinking of grabbing it. Hey, fuck yeah! Because you can play them on the PC. You've got Windows 10. Yeah, you can rock that shit. So I'm I've thinking about getting that. Upgrade yeah. Windows 10 eventually. I'm really hoping Microsoft does it for free, even though I don't want to. Because fuck Windows 10. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I'm so torn on Windows 10 because from a privacy standpoint, it is the worst operating yeah. system ever. But from a Windows standpoint, it is one of the best. Yeah. It's so smooth and stable. And while it doesn't have drivers for some older equipment that people would still be using today, it still works so well. Like if they were trying to record a podcast. Yeah, like if they were trying <laughs> to record a podcast and the fucking mixer company still haven't updated their drivers for Windows 10, despite the fact that it's been out for like 10 fucking years now. It hasn't been, but still, that's yes. the fucking point. You've had time. Update your fucking drivers. But yeah, but I digress. <laughs> it's it, it's something I just need to do. It, it, yeah, I, I I don't know. I think I think Stadia is just going to be one of those things that will be around for a little bit. And I think it'll still I think Google will pride might keep them um, supporting it for a, a while, but it'll right. just no one will talk about it. No, no. Like, I mean, I'm I'm like we've said before, the, the console market is pretty much done. Yeah. Nobody is going to break into the console market unless somehow they've come up like and they have real exclusives. If you find a way to pack into a small thing, maybe the size of a Shield TV or a little bit bigger, um, the ability to play 4K, ten, you know, 60 frames a second type shit into a box that big mm -hmm. and you can you can sit there and price it competitively and make it easy as, easy as dicks to develop for and mm -hmm. port games over. I could see somebody coming up with a solution like that, maybe breaking in and gaining some ground. Yeah. But it it, it, it doesn't need to be like the Ouya. Like, you need to play more than Jeez. Android games, you know? You need to be able to play AAA titles. You need to be able to do it easily, make it developing for it easy as hell, and it needs to be powerful. But most importantly, you need to have a good price on it. Yeah. You know, I don't like them 
and I don't like admitting this, but a company, and they might have even talked about doing this off and on, Apple would be the company that could do it. Yeah. That would do it. And I don't know about actual um, pricing being fair or anything. It would probably be way overpriced. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if it's they Apple, so strategically they were going to do it, yeah. they would do it, and it would it would have the 4K. It would probably have all of the things they said. Yeah. Uh, it just, price-wise, would be pretty, probably not <laughs> cheap, but... For a that higher end market, yeah. they could totally do it, and they yeah. would. Um, their service for their phones, their Apple Game service, yeah, is on mobile for mo- like like phone games, hands down the best out there. Yeah, it's it, it's you pay a monthly price, you get these full games. Yeah, it's like yeah, if they pulled pulled that over, and I could see them starting in the mobile with mobile games, and then going and moving on to bigger stuff. Right? Yeah, no, I could see it being a thing. I don't know. I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I've I've bitched enough. I got to talk about because I played about four and a half hours of it. Um, I did pick up uh, Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen what, Order. Fallen Order. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say Jedi Order. Fallen Order. Um, and yes, Star Wars. It, it, yeah, I mean, like, I've heard a lot of good things about like it. Like I it's, said, it's amazing. Like we said, I said last week, and you now have seen the Mandalorian and also really enjoyed the hell out of it oh yeah it was really good mandalorian hits that itch for star wars makes me want to be in a galaxy far far away yeah and this game definitely goes and fills in is like is right there um it's fucking it's a good action game yep it's got the sat like it's star wars it's got all the visuals it's got the sound i Ooh. mine's a little like I'd, I'd hit a bit of stuttering and i'm not sure if that's because I've been, you know, been playing Destiny all day and then played this, or I'd switched over and was using the Steam Link. Right. Um, either way, I think what I'm going to do is plug my controller into my PC and just play it on my PC. Right. Uh, either way, the game is still looks really, really fucking good. Um, it's fun, it, except it is a Dark Souls-esque game. Right. And that's, I don't mind difficult games. I like. I'm fine with a slash uh, uh, an 3D action game, a hack and slash type game. Right, right. Um, like like I've said, one of my favorite games is Ninja Gaiden. Right. Uh, I like um, Devil May Cry. Right. I like Dante's Inferno. I like that sort of game. Right. However, I fucking hate the respawn system from the Souls games. Yeah. I do not like having a point. I have to and stop fucking copying it. Yeah. It's seriously. not just have it, a checkpoint system. Yeah. You have a checkpoint system anyway. I'm hitting the checkpoint. Put the fucking... You can even make it so I have to go to that checkpoint, and that's where I get to upgrade my skills and shit. The enemies... Res- whatever. Stop with the fucking souls... Um, like, points. I hate that. That is the thing I hate most about those games. I'm fine with them when I'm playing Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Right, yeah. No, I do not want that, that in other games. Yeah. I like the difficulty. I like that I can't just run up and smash on the edge. Actually, I, I kind of don't like that because I got a fucking lightsaber. If I hit you with a lightsaber, you're cut in half, your arm's gone, something like that. Unless yeah. in lore you have very rare things that can stop a lightsaber. Right. right. But it's a game so fine. I, I get why. You got a little bit of suspension of disbelief. I get, yeah, I, get, I get why the giant frog with fangs doesn't get cut in half every time I smack with a lightsaber. But at the same time, I kind of wish I just had to fucking swing it at once and it just died because it is a goddamn lightsaber. I mean, yeah, you, you're holding in your hand a thing that emits plasma, right? And plasma... That can slice through damn near anything. Plasma is one of those things where the heat from that would melt you holding it yeah. if there wasn't a way to contain it. So, like, if you're going to come into contact with just pure plasma, whatever it is is not going to be there anymore. Like, and even more so, it's it's space magic. Right. Because it's even plasma is not as powerful as a lightsaber is supposed to be. Right. It's just, it should be able to slice through everything cleanly. And I get... I get why it doesn't. Again, it's it's still got to be a game. Right, yeah. I like the way Forced Unleashed did it There's got to be some mechanics in there. That, yeah, that I felt like the from... Forced Unleashed was better about it. And this game takes place at, right after, um, that, a few years after uh, the fall of uh, the Republic. Right. Uh, the Empire has taken over. Right. Um, they're 
the clone troopers are out, stormtroopers are in. Right. Like it's it's really really close. I don't know how close. I haven't played it enough to know where it is on New Hope uh, or to a New Hope. Uh, when Basically that starts. on the timeline, yeah. Yeah, on the timeline. Um, it, it seems right now like it takes place right where Force Unleashed did, but that got made non-canon when the new Star Wars stuff started happening, right. when uh, Force Awakens. Right, and, right, yeah. But anyway, it seems like it takes place there, so the idea that there could be some like anti-lightsaber stuff around... Oh, right, is, yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe. whatever. Yeah. But I'm, I'm still... I mean, I you're, can in forgive universe, that. you're in a universe where you can build a ship the size of a star that can take out planets. I would still know. like there to be a game where I used a lightsaber and it acted <laughs> like a lightsaber. Right. But if this isn't that game, fine, because this game is fun to play. That's, that's all um, that matters, right? I don't like that a lot of, it seems like a lot of the enemies are just fucking like animals. Mm. It's like, okay, I get it. I, I, it's, I, I'm. I'm kind of sick of fighting animals already. Right. But uh, like, oh, a ram comes running at me from downhill. <laughs> it's like, why? Just why are stormtroopers getting chased around by giant rats? <laughs> That's space uh, magic. Space magic. Space magic makes space magic. everything big. Yeah. But, All right. But other than that, it's a fun fucking little game. I just I'm so sick and tired of the souls checkpoint system. The oh, now you got to go get your XP back. and You Whoa. lost everything because you died. Fuck that. Yeah. Just make the game hard and let me play through it and overcome the challenge. I don't need that extra shit. Yeah. Leave that to Dark Souls. That is their thing. Stop fucking stealing it. All right. I anyway, think I'm, that's yeah. my little mini rant. Over, there you go. Because it was goddamn annoying me earlier today. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and cut it off there, guys. Um, I'm 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 pretty tired. I've got a piss. And I can't breathe through my right nostril, so I'm, I'm miserable right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, if you guys enjoyed that, enjoy our uh, our talk and our coverage and our bullshitting, you know, give us a like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff on yep. the YouTube. We have social medias. Go visit our social medias. Uh, give us reviews on podcast directories, you know. If you really like us, go uh, on Patreon.com. Join our little Patreon-exclusive community there. Mm-hmm. Join the Discord. Join the Discord, give us a buck, and uh, like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about us, because we suck. Yeah. All right, guys, for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Fuck yeah. Yes.